Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. The day I thought I'd never see is here. It's opening day 2020, Washington Nationals and the New York Yankees. And like a late call from the governor, there's breaking baseball news before the first pitch is even thrown tonight. I thought I was a big baseball fan, but you know what? I don't even recognize this game these teams are uh, playing and that I'll be watching tonight. Dave Bacon will have more on that in a minute. Then there's a name change temporarily in the NFL. Mary Kay will talk about that. We have gone from no live sports to virtually non-stop sports. What will tomorrow bring? Dave Bacon and Mary Kay Cabot are here. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a uh, Thursday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again, More Sports and Less Levine, into our uh, 24th consecutive year, soon to be 25, exclusively on Cleveland.com. Before we get to Mary Kay Cabot, who covers the Browns and has for so many years, let's get to Dave Bacon from uh, Classic Sports. Dave, there's uh, it's like the, the governor says, all right, uh, let me ring this bell here. It's clemency. What did they, what did they do at the last minute here? Well... We, we had been told all along that uh, until opening day, until the first pitch was thrown, baseball reserved the right to expand the playoffs. And that's exactly what they did. It has been agreed upon by the Players Union, ratified reportedly by the owners. Joel Sherman of the New York Times is reporting within the last 10 minutes that it has been ratified by the owners. So baseball will now have a 16-team playoff, eight from each league in the playoffs for 2020 only, the way it shakes down. The division winners of each three of the divisions will qualify for the playoffs, as will the second place team in each of the divisions. And then the two best records from the remaining teams in the American and National League, a total of eight teams from each league qualify for the playoffs. First round is different as well. Host team will play all three games. It's a best of three all at the higher seeds home park. So home field advantage stays intact. Uh, this has reportedly been agreed upon only for the 2020 season. Uh, the other thing that it does is that it increases the TV revenue. It's always all about the money, Les, you know that. So from 43 potential games under the old system to 65. So it's a way that the owners can make up lost revenue from losing 100 games of the regular season. All right, clearly during the negotiations prior to whatever kind of agreement they have here, uh, the Players Association knew there was more money to be had. Mm -hmm. That's clear Player, that there was. Players typically don't get a lot of money from, um, from a playoff pool as far as money goes. They're, they're going to get $50 million. So it's, it's a way they can get more money as well. The owners are getting a lot more money uh, in revenue right. from TV revenue. You, you laid it out there great. So let's, let's just use the Indians as an example. Indians in the Central Division of the AL, and they're also uh, grouped in with the Central Division of the National League as yep. far as the schedule is concerned. The two top teams, in the record-wise, mm -hmm. will make the playoffs. Yep. So one would assume that the Indians in the same division as Minnesota, Chicago, Detroit, and Kansas City puts them into a, a much better opportunity Absolutely. to get in. Two of the best three. And, and so you're, you're really fighting with the White Sox and the Twins. Right. Because, the, you know, having said that, you a 60-game season, anything can happen. Yeah. It, the, another reason why, if, if you heard some of the people talking, a 60-game season, you go through the starting rotation once everybody has a bad game, you could find yourself five yeah. games back in a hurry. Yeah. Well, what do you think? What's your initial reaction? It's although, a, we, although we sort of knew it, something right. was going to happen. Well, the, the thing that was surprising is you didn't hear them even talking about it until right. earlier to, today. So they basically did it with an hour and a half left. They decided that it was ratified by everybody. Right. And, they, and the clock was ticking, so they yep. had to get they it done then. They had to get it done before the first pitch at 7.05. Right. right. You watching tonight? Oh, yeah. I'll see. It, it'll be interesting. There, there hadn't been a whole lot going on to no. pay attention to. Now it's starting to ramp back up. A little bit. I, I know I've said this all along that I didn't like base, what baseball is doing in this spring, mm -hmm. in this uh, off season, and but 
once the game started, I, I'll be there. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> again, this is such an anomaly with the 60-game season, and most of it focused in your division. That's another reason that I think they went first and second place teams in each division. There's not a lot of crossover going on um, other than playing, you know, the NL Central for the American League Central. Are, are we done at this point now, rules-wise? They what have to be. Do? Once the game Nothing starts, 705 first pitch. Well, there, there could be a rain delay. So in, uh, <laughs> in, this, in this economic uh, climate and the way things have gone, who knows? But you would think, yeah, they're, they're ready to go. All right, that's, that's big news. Did you think it was going to happen? Did you think there was going to be a I, baseball in, season? Initially, I thought they would expand the playoffs. We'll see. Now the question is, can they, can they keep everybody healthy enough yeah. and, and get the season played? Very good. All right, thanks, Dave Bacon of uh, Classic Sports for providing us with – when you say update, you mean update. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Hot off the press. Hot off the press. All right, 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Mary Kay Cabot standing by or sitting by or whatever she's doing. She'll have some int – there's interesting news there, too, and a name possible – well, a temporary name change in the NFL. A politically correct one. I, I don't think it's – well, we'll talk about it, but I, I think it's probably the right thing to do at this point. Yes. Yeah, you you got to do something for the upcoming season. Right. You can't, you know, that makes the most sense. Well, we're talking about the Washington football oh, team. Right. And uh, we'll see. It may may or may not have something to do with the speed in which the Cleveland uh, baseball, baseball team, team. <laughs> has to do something and do something quick. Thanks to Dave, uh, Dave Bacon of Classic Sports, who will have you got the show tomorrow night, right? Yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk Weekend Indians, winners. we'll talk Browns, yeah. Bunch yeah. of stuff coming up. Terrific. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back. Mary Kay Cabot standing by. More sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Did you know that the Ohio Lottery has paid out uh, over a billion dollars over the past six months? People are winning in record numbers, and winning ha is uh, happening all over the state of Ohio. Play an Ohio Lottery game and play it today. Then go to Facebook.com where you can find us. Very simple. We uh, place a uh, question there in the morning. You respond to it any time of the day. Then we talk about it that night. More sports and Les Levine continues in a moment, a moment exclusively on Cleveland.com. Presque Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Do you like Ohio State football? Would you like to get information from me, Doug Maurice, about Ohio State football without having to look at my face? We have got the plan for you. Become an Ohio State text subscriber through cleveland.com. You send a text, 614-350-3315. What do you get? Two, three, four texts right in your phone every day about Ohio State football. Inside information, polls, voting. All kinds of things. You can be on our podcast. We take tech subscriber questions on our Buckeye Talk podcast every week. If you really want to be involved with Ohio State football, in season or out of season, become an Ohio State tech subscriber from Cleveland.com. Send a text to 614-350-3315. 14-day free trial. What do you have to lose? $3.99 a month after that. 614-350-3315. I'll see you in your phone. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. 
Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery, partners in education, where stars shine. Birthdays for today, uh, Pee Wee Reese, the great Dodger, Don Paul, former Browns defensive backfield, uh, Don Drysdale, Pizza Crust, uh, born in 1947, Gary Payton, the glove, and uh, uh, Nomar Garcia Parra, born in uh, 1973. Big day in uh, birthdays today. More sports than Les Levine continues, 216-575-0403. Now we bring in our regular, Mary Kay Cabot. Hi, Mary Kay. Hey, Les, how you doing? I'm doing well, how about you? You know, breaking news is breaking news. You gotta break it when you can break it. That's right. You know, it's hard to come by these days. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I just wonder, uh, you and the way you cover the Browns and, and the NFL, um, going quite uh, silent for some time, and now all of a sudden it seems like every day there's going to be something. Is that the way you think, or, or they'll use it up and then move on to other things? Well, you know what? They are, uh, you know, things are changing every day. I mean, if you look at what's going on in the NFL right now, they're working very hard to come up with an 11th hour agreement so that they can actually start training camp. Uh, so hopefully that will go off without a hitch, but they have got some things to work out before that can happen. All right, the news comes out today. Dan Snyder agrees to uh, make a move here. It's kind of interesting because here was a guy who didn't want to talk about his uh, Washington football team for so long. Now he's not only talking, it, it seems like he's over-talking, although the trouble he's in, I, I don't blame him at this point. What do you think? They uh, temporarily, at least for purposes of this year, they have uh, changed the name of the Washington football team to the Washington football team. They've taken out that, well, uh, that offensive logo. Yeah, you know, I don't know if, you know, that will last throughout the entire season or if they just kind of had to get something on the books to get started with. <laughs> Uh, since they really don't know exactly what the name of it's going to be yet. So, uh, you know, I don't know if that will be the name of it in December, but for right now, it is the Washington football team. All right, let me, let me guess here. Somebody took out the, uh, the name, the patents on these names, and they, they paid for it, and now the, now, now the lawyers are at work on this. Probably. I mean, you know, there, there is a lot at stake. You know, there, there is a lot of, you know, merchandising and apparel and, you know, all different kinds of things. There's a, a lot of agreements, marketing, media, uh, you name it. So uh, there's a lot of change underfoot there. And, and now uh, they will have a generic name until further notice. Mary Kay, do you, do you think that the, uh, the Indians are, are part of this deal too? Do you think they'd like to be a generic name for a year or two and then, then take their time and bring in more people to come up with ideas? Uh, you know, perhaps. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, maybe the, the Washington football team will set the precedent for how the Indians will go about this. And I like the fact that the Indians are getting input from Native American groups and trying to be very politically correct about this and very sensitive about the whole situation. And, uh, you know, yeah, I think that it, it probably is a good idea to take their time and try to figure out how they want to handle it. So how are the play-by-play -play announcers going to do it? Touchdown, the Washington football team? How are they going to do that? You know what? I, I don't know. I guess that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to be very careful about how they, how they do it. I mean, old habits die hard. I couldn't even imagine, uh, you know, guys trying to write about or announce the Cleveland Indians without using the Indians' name sure. either. So uh, it'll be very interesting to see how, how people can get through that. All right, let's talk Browns football. The uh, incident in, uh, at the end of the, the season last year, or in the season last year, uh, with Miles Garrett, of course, he has his big extension uh, in the last couple of days. You've gotten to know him as, uh, cover, while covering the Browns. What do you think about him being affected personally and mentally going forward after, after the events of, of the, the mistake that he admittedly made and then now going back into uh, uh, the NFL saying it's okay for him to play? What do you expect from him this year? Well, I think one of the interesting things about the fact that he is returning this year, fans in some of the stands might not have appreciated, you know, what he did, and he might have gotten a hard time from a lot of fans. But in some games this year, there won't even be fans. And where there are fans, in some cases, there will only be 10,000 in a stadium that seats 70,000. So I think when it comes to, you know, kind of getting that hard time he might have gotten in some cities, 
I just don't think that uh, that it's going to have the same impact that it would have. Now in Pittsburgh, of course, that's a different story. But you know, seventy thousand fans in Pittsburgh as opposed to you know ten or fifteen thousand sure. uh, raining booze down upon him. That's still going to be a different story. So I think he catches a little bit of a break in that regard. Uh, but just in terms of how this might affect him, uh, he has to be able to go out and play football and play very aggressively while also not drawing those penalties, not losing his temper, and kind of walking that fine line. Yeah, you know, we think of Garrett and what he did with the, throw, the helmet and all, but you forget he had, a, he had some other penalties that were needless at the time and, and hurt, the, hurt the team. Yeah, there were some things that happened in those first couple of games. He actually had as many penalties as he had sacks in those first two games. Five sacks, I think five penalties, and more than $52,000 in fines. Uh, he had, uh, you know, knocked Trevor Simeon out of the Jets game with an ankle injury for the season. But once again, he contends. Now, he was fined for two illegal hits in that game, but he was still trying to work through what's a legal hit and what's an illegal hit. And, uh, and I think he's, he kind of got that as the season went along, and hopefully he will have remembered what a legal hit is this year. Uh, all right, last year we were talking about the OTAs uh, and, and uh, Beckham not being there. Uh, they lost some val I think they lost some valuable time last season when he didn't attend the OTAs. Um, have they lost time again this year? Or they have lost time, but how, how much different is it than it was last year? Well, what we will find out this year is can the scheme overcome the lack of reps between Baker Mayfield and Odell? And I'm going to say that I think it will. I think uh, the way that they're going to draw it up this year uh, should make things a little bit easier for Baker to get the ball to Odell, for Odell not to be so double teamed. You know, with the, with the use of play action and things like that, uh, they're going to draw – uh, a lot of defenders in to try to stop the run. That's going to open things up. Then you've got Baker Mayfield rolling out and bootlegging. And uh, I think he does very, very well when he throws on the run. So I think even though these guys haven't really had their time together to figure this all out, I still think it's going to look better than it did last year. Well, there's some numbers we have up on the screen that look pretty good right now. Uh, Beckham uh, caught 55.6% of passes thrown his way. That's a career low. 64.7 yards in a game, career low. Passes thrown his way that were intercepted. Uh, Mayfield, 70% uh, uh, passer rating when throwing to Beckham. You know, sometimes I think these, some of these stats are overrated how they, because of the sample size. But this one, the, when you watch them play, it looked, like, it looked like these stats. The stats didn't lie on this one. You're exactly right about that it looked exactly like those numbers. And there were times where you just wondered why those guys were so far apart in terms of being on the same page. I mean, it just looked like uh, they were in different playbooks at times. And hopefully that will all change this year. It seems like Odell is completely bought into this system and to this scheme. We know Baker really is excited about it. And I think that uh, I, I have to believe that it's going to be a lot better than the numbers you just rattled off. Yeah, you know, when you think about it, what these numbers and these stats and the talent on, on paper at least, this looks like for you personally to cover a team, this looks like it's gonna be an exciting time for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, it looks like it should be a pretty good team. Now, I thought it was a very talented team last year, and I've said this many, many times. It was, we were not all crazy. You know, we didn't overestimate the talent. The talent was there, but they just didn't have the coaching to bring it together. They just, the coaching did not match up to the talent level. This year, we'll soon find out if the coaching is what they need it to be. And, you know, there are indications that it is, but the truth of the matter is that we really don't, quite know yet how it's all going to play out. Uh, they haven't had a chance to work out the kinks. They haven't had a chance to even meet their players yet in many cases. Uh, so it's it's going to be a bit of a work in progress early on, and they've got to get a lot done in training camp. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Mary Kay Cabot of the Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com uh, is, is with us, as she uh, is normally on, on Thursday nights. Uh, we, we've got to find, we talked about the uh, uh, Landry and Beckham Got to find a third receiver. Do you have any ideas that we can uh, chop over here during the break and then come up with them when we get back? 
Well, you know, people should be thinking a lot about Kareem Hunt as the third receiver, not necessarily, uh, you know, the, the role that you would expect for him, uh, but I could see him playing that a lot. Uh, then you've got Richard Higgins. He's ready to go in that role and really hungry and, and wanting it. And a few other guys. All right, we'll check out those few other guys when we get back. Mary Kay Cabot is with us. Uh, Northeast Factory Direct, uh, four locations. If you include the great website, which you need to check out if you're going to go there, northeastfactorydirect.com. Macedonia on uh, Freeway Drive. Then you've got Lakeland Boulevard in Euclid. And, of course, uh, West 140th near the airport. That's on the west side of Cleveland. We'll uh, take a break. Uh, we shall come back in a moment. More sports and less living continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Wow. Get Nature Stone and never replace your garage flooring again. Act now for huge summer savings on our exclusive Nature's Blend Stone. As low as $2.99 a square foot plus installation. Only Nature Stone eliminates cracked, uneven concrete. And Nature Stone never peels like cheap paints and coatings. Safe, beautiful garage flooring that's always backed by Russell's Promise our true unconditional warranty. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. You can email us during the show at uh, reallesslevine at gmail dot com. All right, uh, you didn't. We were talking about uh, potential third wide receivers, and uh, you you didn't come up. Uh, well, who who'd you miss? Who else is out there? You know what? There's another uh, candidate that I didn't mention right before the break, and that is their their rookie, their draft pick, Donovan Peoples Jones. So he's right. somebody uh, that will also contend for that third receiver role. Uh, but I really think, uh, you know, the one to watch and keep an eye on would be Kareem Hunt. It is a way to get him on that football field. And it's also a way for Kevin Stefanski uh, to, to leave out that ambiguity out there of whether or not they are running the ball or passing the ball. And he likes that. He likes the defense not knowing which is going to happen. Yeah. And this whole offense is designed and set up uh, so that you're really not sure uh, which one of those things is taking place until the very end. And you've got uh, some trickery going on with the quarterback and see uh, see how he's able to carry that off also. Uh, I don't normally uh, like to get tied up talking with Michigan fans, but uh, I've, I've got a couple of friends. They, they made a mistake 30, 40 years ago. It, it, it happened. They went to Michigan. Um, but they tell me on People's Jones, they, they tell me that this kid is going to be the surprise of the draft as far as the Browns roster is concerned. Well, are, are your are your friends Urban Meyer? Because he feels the <laughs> same exact way about this. Uh, you know, there are people that are very, very excited about Donovan Peoples Jones, and I'm sure he wants to come out and uh, and prove to people that he should have gone way higher in the draft than the sixth round. So we'll see. I mean, I've talked to other people. Uh, you know, I've talked to some scouting people and personnel and things like that, and they said, no, we we think uh, sixth round is about right for him. It's it's good for him to to come in and kind of get his feet wet, wet as a returner and then see what he can do as a receiver. Well, he better do it quick. Uh, how about the uh, right guard? Who who do you see competing and, and winning that, uh, eventually winning that job? Well, you know, I think Wyatt Teller is probably the front runner for that job right now, but you've also got Drew Forbes competing for that job. Uh, you also have uh, the rookie Nick Harris that will get some 
opportunities there. So, and then they've, they've got a couple of other guys that, uh, you know, that you can possibly plug in there. But I, I think those are some of the top contenders. Well, there you see the stats on these guys. Um, Wyatt Teller only had two penalties in 557 snaps. And it uh, looks like there's a lot of people there. But you, you like the other positions. There, there seems to be uh, depth and experience. And then you got looks wide open the rest of the way to finish off the, uh, the, the, the rest of that uh, offensive line. So we'll keep our eyes on, on all of that. How, how excited are you, Mary Kay, that it looks like finally the Browns and everybody else in the NFL will start? Uh, or, you look, or is it like Lucy in the football moving out of the way just as Charlie Brown's about to kick? Well, again, uh, you know, let's hope that it goes off without a hitch. Right now, they are trying to work some, through some of the economic issues. And the latest news is that the NFL owners are, are basically saying or floating out there, hey, we'll, we'll stay virtual um, training camp as long as we have to if we don't have this economic agreement worked out yet. And basically, uh, it has to do with how and when they are going to take the brunt of these multi-billion dollar losses anticipated from lack of fans in the stands this year. So, uh, you know, they're trying to figure out how to spread it out, how far to, you know, when, when to realize those losses. And uh, if they don't have an agreement, according to some, the most recent reports, if they don't have an agreement by the end of this weekend, uh, they might not have the opening of camp next week. Oh, no, don't do that to me. I just, I just got back from baseball. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. I mean, I think they'll probably figure it out. Uh, but but here's the thing. They're not really taking the field next week. And I think that's something that people are, are probably a little bit confused about. Uh, one, once they report for training camp on July 28th, if it happens on July 28th, uh, they, they will not be actually starting strength and conditioning for five days after that. Wow. Each player has, has to take test negative twice over the span of 72 hours before they can walk into the facility. Who determines that? Does the player say, I'll take the next two days, or does the team say, you take Thursday and Saturday? How does that work? No, all players uh, are, are due to report. The veterans are all due to report on July 28th for the first round of testing. And so over the next, um, you know, over the next, whatever, four or five days, they will all be tested twice. And as long as they have those two negative tests, then they're ready to go. Uh, once it comes to be, you know, day five, they can go into the facility and they can attend meetings and they can start strength and conditioning. If they don't, if they test positive, uh, then they have to uh, be taken out of the mix and, you know, be quarantined and all of that. Very good. Mary Kay Cabot is with us, Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com. Mary Kay, we had a little dust up last night on the show with a caller, uh, and I've offered him the opportunity to make it right, uh, and I'm asking him to uh, put up some money and uh, help us with the uh, Parkinson's in motion uh, walk. Well, it's a virtual walk, and it's coming up uh, on uh, the 13th of September. Now, that's a, a Sunday, but the Browns will be playing at night, so there's no conflict there. Uh, the, uh, the team that we have put together is moving more with less, and uh, we'd love you to join us or uh, come up with your own team, raise some great money uh, for Pals in Motion, which is uh, for the Be in Motion uh, organization. So check it out there. Go to the website, events.beinmotion.org, and you, you won't find a better place. And they, uh, they improve the lives of those with Parkinson's disease, and I'm part of it, and I'd like to see uh, everybody join us on that. Uh, and we'll, you'll hear more about it as we get closer. 216-575-0403 is the number to call Mary Kay saying, what kind of dust-up can you have over, over, over something like that? I'll explain it to you when we get back. Let's uh, take a break. We'll come on back in a moment. More sports and less living continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin-Wallace, so I started at Baldwin-Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. 
Well, hello everyone. Let me tell you a little bit about Brown's Football Insider. For only $3.99 a month, you can get texts sent right to your phone each day from me, Dan Lobby, Scott Pasco, and Ellis Williams. In addition to that, you'll receive a Football Insider newsletter every day with special things from us, uh, things that you won't see anywhere else on the site. Uh, you'll get breaking news, analysis, features, film breakdown, and things like that. Texting us directly gives you a great chance to cut through the clutter of Facebook, Twitter, other social media, and avoid the trolls. Also, it's the only way to get your questions on the Orange and Brown Talk podcast. So why should you sign up? Try a 14-day free trial. You can cancel at any time. All it takes is one text, but you won't want to cancel. We have hundreds of subscribers join us over the last year. They love it and have stayed with us. We're seeing the Football Insider community grow every week. And it's only $3.99 a month, which is less than 14 cents a day. What I like most about Football Insider is the opportunity to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and really communicate with you. So how can you become a Football Insider? You can click on cleveland.com slash browns, the blue banner at the top of the page. Or easier yet, text me at 216-208-3965. Again, that's 216-208-3965. Three nine six five. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at smileyone.com. There you have it. On this date in sports history, 2000, Tiger Woods completes a, a career grand slam, becoming the youngest player to ever do that. That's unbelievable. And who would have thought that his career would not have skyrocketed him to the, the far and away greatest of all time? Probably still is, but uh, it's, uh, it's an incredible story, no question about that. Mary Kay Cabot is with us. Mary Kay, we've been talking about the Browns and their uh, having the most cap space. We've been talking about that for a long time. Any chance they're going to use any of that money and, and spend it on somebody? You know, I don't really see them signing another big name free agent, you know, before this season, I, you know, the only chance of that happening really uh, was going to be Jadavian Clowney. That ship seems to have sailed. The only thing that I have like way back in the back of my mind is uh, possibly, you know, what if they kick the tires on Yannick Nagak away from the Jaguars, another really good young pass rusher in the prime of his career who wants to be traded. So uh, that is, is one person and, and he would uh, need some kind of a, a contract redo. So they would use some of that money on him if it gets to that point. Right now, I don't know if they have expressed interest in that or not, but it wouldn't surprise me based on the fact that they were looking at Clowney, another pass rusher. Well, there was another name out there, and that's uh, Larry Warford, who uh, I think is the best player available. Is, is that right? Yeah, but you know what? They've had a long time to try to sign him. And since they haven't expressed interest in him uh, to this point, I, I really don't see it happening unless it becomes evident right away that, uh, that it's not working out for them at right guard. But uh, it, it was my understanding that Larry Warford didn't really have the, you know, the, the movement skills that they're looking for uh, in this wide zone blocking scheme. Uh, so as of right now, I'm going to say no on that one. All right. Well, the money's still there, I guess. For the next 27 years, they get to be the, the most cap space team. No, I'm just kidding. Eventually, they'll give up. They'll give it up. Yeah, it's going to start running out uh, pretty soon. Depending, on, I mean, they're very smart capologists in Berea. There's no question about that. But they've got some big, big paydays coming up. Hey, have you capologists? Have you ever run into an actual NFL insider? <laughs> I, I am an NFL insider, so. Well, so anybody, I mean, no, not, not anybody in your case, because you, you deserve it, but somebody can just get up and said, from now on, refer to me as an NFL insider. Does that happen that way? No, not really. I, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Most people don't actually say that unless 
you are that. Well, I'm a Heisman Trophy voter, but I've never won up. I've never gone up to anybody and say, "Hi, you may not know me, but I'm a Heisman Trophy uh, voter." <laughs> well, I don't go around telling people, "Hey, I'm an NFL insider." I just right. say, "Hey, hey, Mary Kay." Hey, Mary Kay. How often do you get that? Walking down the street, filling up your gas tank, you get a lot of that. No, not really. It's such nope. a, but it's such a glamorous business. <laughs> I do get a lot of Browns questions out there. I really do get that, you know, oh, and I sure. forget, you know, I'll be running to, uh, you know, a convenience store to the grocery store, right. uh, you know, forgetting that, you know, some people are going to recognize me. I, I have a tendency to forget that. 216-575-0403 if you want to talk to, to Mary Kay. Um, as, as far as the, the Browns are concerned, and there's so many questions, we, we're making a lot of assumptions about them. And one assumption you shouldn't make, or I guess you should make, is that, that you got a better coach in uh, Kevin Stefanski than you, than you had with Freddie Kitchens. On the other hand, he hasn't coached either. And so at what point, you know, the Browns coaches seem to have a certain moment in game three where they put their head against their, their hand against their heads and say, oh, now I see why guys have trouble here. Is there a certain game that you see that coming to? No, I don't think there's a certain game. I, I think one of the things that they've done a great job of this year is surrounding Kevin Stefanski with some really great guys and some veteran guys. Bill Callahan will be a tremendous resource for him, the off offensive line coach. He's been a head coach before. He brings a lot of wisdom to the table. And then today, uh, Kevin Stefanski hired Kevin Rogers, who was the quarterback's coach of the Vikings for five years. He's coming in as the senior offensive assistant and he will help not only Kevin Stefanski, but the rest of the offensive staff. It is going to take a little while to kind of pull it all together and make sure that everyone is speaking the same language and doing the same thing. Uh, so I don't think they're leaving Kevin Stefanski hanging out to dry. Okay, so they hire this guy and give him a fancy title. What, what, is, what is the definition of that title? What does it actually do? Well, the, the de definition of the title is, is basically to be almost kind of a right-hand man uh, to Kevin Stefanski and you know he can't be everywhere at all times he can't answer every single question he can't mentor every single guy on the staff and bring everybody up to speed on everything all the time so it gives him a chance to have somebody uh, that, that knows exactly uh, what he needs and what he's saying and what he needs to do uh, he can articulate that to not only other coaches but to the players he can carry the message and help Kevin Stefanski. Does it seem kind of strange to you that they waited till just two or three days before reporting to camp to name somebody that, or isn't that job as important as it sounds? No, I think it's an important job, and I don't know exactly why it took so long, but I will say that all along I thought that, that Bill Callahan might end up with that kind of a role, and now I see you know, why he didn't. I don't know. It, there probably was maybe a contractual issue, maybe – uh, Kevin Rogers had to wait for his contract uh, with William and Mary to be up or something like that. Uh, but they left that title open. And, uh, and so now it's not surprising that he filled it. Are they done in the coaching department now? Probably. Is that a you game know, to I, play? Glad, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm glad that, that he did add a senior offensive assistant. I mean, up to this point, I really thought that, that Callahan uh, you know, should have had that that title just because he's been a head coach in the NFL before. Uh, and I really didn't understand where they were going with that. And uh, and now I get it. East, West, and South, that's where you're going to find Northeast Factory Direct plus the website, northeastfactorydirect.com. Sokolowski's University Inn, the only restaurant in all of Northeastern Ohio that has ever won the uh, James Beard Foundation, Foundation Award. Mike, congratulations to Mike and Bernie Sokolowski's University Inn. We're coming back in a moment. More sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Never replace your basement flooring again. Act now for huge summer savings on our exclusive Nature's Pearl Stone. As low as $2.99 a square foot plus installation. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone! When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. 
At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. As usual, we have a Facebook question of the day, so let's uh, check that out. Uh, here's what we ask you. He said, uh, who do you expect to have a breakout year for the Cleveland Browns this season? Mary Kay will get to you after we uh, give, give the audience. Uh, Aaron Woods says, uh, Odell Beckham, if he can stay healthy, I'm really, uh, I'm really expecting big things from him this year. Andy Meese says, a full year of uh, Kareem Hunt should allow him to break out for the Browns. And uh, with all the, uh, the weapons at the wide receiver, presumably healthy, and being in the same backfield as Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt should be able to fly under the radar and uh, become uh, a, a threat guy in the run and passing game uh, like he's shown off in the past. Mary Kay, who, to you, who is um, the one who should have a breakout year for the Browns? Well, are we allowed to count Baker Mayfield even though he kind of broke out uh, at the tail end of his rookie year? Uh, I, I think that everything is set up and geared towards helping Baker Mayfield uh, climb out of second last in the NFL. Still so hard to believe that he is down there at number 31 overall in several things, including interceptions, rating, completion percentage. I mean, come on, Baker Mayfield, the number one overall pick in 2018 should not be residing down there at number one, number 31 overall. So I expect him uh, to have a re-breakout season and, uh, and really climb up the the well, chart there. Here's how I look at it. If you're going to be bad, be real bad so you can come out and you got a lot of room to grow. I mean, if he said he's 31, if he was 14 or 12, you'd, you might be happy with his performance, but I don't think anybody was happy with his performance. But I'll tell you what I have noticed is the national guys, for the most part, are behind the Browns and Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham Jr. It seems to me they're all in step with these guys. Yeah, everybody's pretty much saying the same thing. I've, I've heard very few people that don't believe that Baker Mayfield is, is going to rebound in a huge way this year. Uh, for the most part, everyone expects him uh, to really flourish in this scheme. And as we all know, everything is set up for him to do that, including two new offensive tackles, including Austin Hooper at tight end, and probably a ton more use of play action and a lot more running game. Well, and he, we got to believe that he understands it's make or break this year. If he, if he doesn't have a, the kind of year you can forget being a franchise, franchise quarterback, not just here, but around the league. There's nobody standing in line to get him if he has a bad year. Yeah, you know what? I don't know if, uh, you know, if it's necessarily a make or break year because it has been such a weird offseason, uh, but it is a very important year. I do think that they'll obviously pick up his fifth-year option. And if he plays reasonably well enough, they will start talking extension with him in the offseason. So it is huge. But if for some reason he doesn't have the year people expect him to have, I don't think they'll give up on him yet. 216-575-0403 if you want to get in to, to talk to Mary Kay before the end of the show. Uh, let's... Uh... Uh, let's uh, take a break. We'll come on back. We'll check out if there's a How Come Quickies or anything else left in the hopper. More sports and less Levine exclusive on Cleveland.com. We have the voicemail of Truth and Reason, and that number is uh, 216-266-50. If you can't get us when we're on the air live, and that's uh, Eastern time from 6 until 7, Monday through Friday. 
If you can't get us then, you can get us uh, 23 hours a day otherwise at the number you see right there, 216-200-6650. Mary Kay and I return one more time exclusively on cleveland.com. nature stone and never replace your garage flooring again. Act now for huge summer savings on our exclusive Nature's Blend stone. As low as $2.99 a square foot plus installation. Only Nature Stone eliminates cracked, uneven concrete. And Nature Stone never peels like cheap paints and coatings. Safe, beautiful garage flooring that's always backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Weekend Winter Edition coming up tomorrow. Doug Lay Maurice will join uh, Joey Noga and uh, Dave Bacon right here on uh, Cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer. Uh, Mary Kay Cabot is with us. Mary Kay, somebody, I got an email the other day um, asking the question, which I know you can answer better than I. And that is, um, when, you, when you look at, you have a new quarterback, or uh, I'm sorry, a new head coach, new coaching staff and all that. And last year you had uh, Beckham not, not making it for OTAs. How much... How much do you ascribe to how the season went or how the relationship went with certain players based on the fact they missed, that they missed some opportunities to, to get to know each other better? Or is that just stuff that us non-football players don't know about? You mean heading into this season, not yeah. having an opportunity? Yeah. yeah. I, I how, think much, how much, what does it mean to them this year? I, I think it's huge. I, I think it is, uh, you know, I think it's enormous. I think that, you know, John Harbaugh knows his players. He knows how they're going to react on game day. He knows how they react to adversity. He knows what uh, Lamar Jackson is going to do when he calls a certain play. And, you know, he knows how his interaction with his own coaching staff is. Those are all things that Kevin Stefanski doesn't know yet. Uh, he's got a lot on his plate and he's going to be learning on the fly. The first time that he sees his football team together on the football field is going to be in the opener against the Baltimore Ravens, the defending AFC North champion Baltimore Ravens. That's a tall order. That's a daunting task. Um, well, the, the NFL isn't in business to help any of these people, I wouldn't think, right? I mean, they, they might have given them a chance to have a different schedule, but that's about it. Yeah, but I mean, at that time, no one really knew that there was going to be no offseason. Nobody knew that there were going to be absolutely no preseason games whatsoever, not even one to work out any of the kinks or to figure out uh, who might call the plays. So, uh, you know, I think that they were trying to start the season with some excitement, uh, but it, it does. And it's on the, not only that, it's on the road. Uh, so these guys are going to have to really dig deep for that game. Well, it's interesting. You know, when you just say that they won't even meet each other until the game, that puts it in a totally different basket here. This is, this is, it's really, I, I think people, I think you'd be surprised if it did work. Yeah, I, and you know what? I think it can work. They're just going to have to be really extremely efficient in training camp. Uh, they're just going to have to 
I, I think a lot of like really situational football, they're going to have to do a, a ton, a ton, a ton of, of reps and walkthroughs. And they're not going to be able to, to stand around and waste any time whatsoever. I mean, they've really got to fast track getting to know each other. Now, the first game, uh, you know, they will know each other really well by then from having practiced together for six weeks for that first game. But, uh, but they will not have seen each other in a game situation when the fur is flying. All right, how about losing the exhibition games? Does that really mean anything to the players, to the veterans? I know the, I know the rookies, it'll give them a chance to put their, themselves on tape in case another team wants them down the road. But how, how much does it mean to this current Browns team? You know what? I, I think some of the preseason games can be meaningful, especially once again, when you're talking about the second half of the roster and you're trying to figure out who might win a starting job. I mean, things do happen in those those preseason games. I mean, sometimes starting quarterback jobs are won or lost in preseason games, right or wrong. Uh, so I think there is some merit to them. And, and once again, I think that Kevin Stefanski and his staff, they're going to have to try to make up for that lost time in these practices. All right. So is there a player out there that we aren't thinking about that will somehow, some way, do some things to make them notice and notice quickly. You know what? I, I hope so. I mean, I hope for their sake uh, that, that some of these guys can really uh, go out there in these practices, especially guys like on the linebacking court. I mean, you've got a young guy like Jacob Phillips coming out of LSU. He has an opportunity in training camp to really go out there and make some noise and show them that he deserves a starting job. Right now, if the season started tomorrow, I don't know if he would be in the starting lineup. So he's one of those guys uh, that can make an impact in these practices. And once again, they're not going to have a ton of padded practices. They're not going to be able to do, you know, hitting every single day. I mean, uh, you know, they've really got this thing controlled and worked out to the player's benefit. Uh, but still, I think a guy like that can really show out and, and prove he deserves a job. And I'm wondering if you say that players don't know each other, if you gave them all LSU hats, I think they'd have a ch chance of noticing that the, that guy might have been a teammate of his most recently. Yeah, that's true. It's uh, the, the little Tigers here. But uh, but no, mo most of the Browns players know each other. At least, you know, a, a lot of them do. It's, it's more so that they don't know the coaches and the coaches right. don't know their players. And the coaches, in a lot of cases, don't even really know each other. Uh, from an in-person standpoint, they haven't had that time together uh, in, you know, in the meeting rooms or on the field yet. So it's, it's really, you know, figuring out, you know, Alex Van Pelt trying to decide how does he want to use Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb? Uh, you know, how do those guys work together and play off of each other? Or, you know, with the, you know, new wide zone, how is Nick Chubb adjusting to that? And uh, just a lot of things that they're going to have to figure out in the early part of the season. Yeah, it's interesting because the coaches will have seen, you know, they're, for weeks and weeks and weeks, they've been studying these guys on tape. It hasn't worked the other way around. So you, the, the player may not know what the coach is trying to, to, to uh, get a point across. Whereas uh, uh, I would think that, uh, I would think some of the coaches have a pretty good idea how to work these guys personally. Yeah, and that's true. And not, not only that, not, all are, not only are these guys trying to get to know each other and figure out how the whole chemistry thing is going to work, but they have brand new schemes as well. I mean, these guys are learning new offensive terminology, new defensive terminology. And, you know, in some cases, like for Baker, you know, fourth, uh, fourth offensive coordinator in, in his three years or fourth year. And, uh, you know, it's it's just it's just a lot. Uh, did I say yeah, third year? Yeah. But um, it's it's just it's just a lot for these guys to to try to handle all of this. I, I think the biggest problem is that since the coaches haven't seen the intensity on the field to whether they can make tackles or hold tackles or whatever they have to do, and and I think that's that's going to be a problem. And you, I mean, it's hard hard to believe that a coach wouldn't know till till maybe the second or third day. He will have not seen the player hit a guy in practice. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. The way that it's working out, they've got a long ramp-up phase in training camp. So they are not really going to start practicing with any kind of pads or helmets on until almost basically mid-August, okay? Wow. So you've got 
the first game is September 13th. So there's just not a whole lot of time there uh, for everyone to get their act together. All right. All right. That'll do it for us. You got it in closing tonight. Anything you'd like to impart on our audience? You know, let's just hope that they work out this financial agreement, that everyone's comfortable with it, and that the veterans can report uh, as scheduled on Tuesday, July 28th, get the testing over with, and get on that football field. Excellent. Excellent job as always, Mary Kay. Thanks so much. Sure. Thanks for having me. See you next week. Mary Kay Cabot of The Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com. All right, that'll do it for us. Dave Bacon will be here uh, Friday night with the Weekend Warriors edition, Weekend Winners edition. I'll be back uh, on Monday. At, at this point, uh, we have secured the services of Daryl Ryder of 92.3 The Fan. Uh, we'll see how that works out. He's got to cover most of the Indians game the night before, or, or that night. So uh, we'll see if we have him coming up on Monday. I will right, we'll see you then. Of all the shows I've ever done, this is the most recent. <laughs>